That's creepy as hell, right? Whatever you fear, turn that into something physical. Lock your ass down in some kind of campground with no sun, no birds, no flowers. The radio playing the same situation. Eerie, disturbing, creepy, right? That's this book I'm trying to tell you. Are you listening? You want me to love you, but you don't love me now. Why should I give my heart to you? We gonna shut that motor down. I've been searching for you for a long time now, but you've left my heart's vision. Now you want me to stay in your life. That won't happen again. No, you said no. I said no. Can't blame you. No. That's why I like that book. Sometimes I don't understand why I have what I do Yeah, it's hard to understand when I think like I do mm -hmm. Maybe I just don't get it Am I the only one who knows who I am? What's happening with it? My name is Charlo Ray Crawford and... <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna try not to move too much because it's a bright ass light right behind me and it's gonna blind y'all something serious. And so I feel like I got a little bit of energy so I need to stand up. All right, this is how we're gonna do this right here. Let me see. Let me turn you just a little bit more right there. All right, boom. What time is it? All right. Welcome back to Charlie with Crawford from the heart. Let me talk to you. It's more of an internal kind of book. You, you kind of gotta sit with this book and you, you gotta do a lot of thinking. It kind of makes you wonder, is this what it would be like if you got too much time on your hands, you ain't got nowhere to go. When you start internalizing too much stuff, is this the kind of ish that's going to happen to your life, right? And this car is, is labeled horror for a reason. I don't know what it is about humans, man. When we got too much time to think, and that's kind of one of the takeaways, get out your own damn head sometimes, you know what I mean? And, um... But, but at, the end of the, at the end of the day, the story is incredibly thought-provoking, but it's, it's just eerie. It's an eerie book. It's very disturbing right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is called I Am Behind You. And the book is by John HVD. All right, let me hold on. <laughs> John HVD Lindqvist. Sorry if I butchered your name, man. I actually read this book physically i didn't even go on libby one no audiobook action popping off or nothing like that so everybody look up the right pronunciation of this man's name so that we can respect him you know what I mean? a compelling eerie new novel from the internationally best-selling author of let the right one in i'm gonna have to read that book and i wonder if it's as internalized you know what I mean? an internal horror if that even makes sense like it's a horror of the mind. It's a horror of the mind. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that book out. It's a seemingly beautiful day when four average families wake up one morning in an ordinary campsite. But during the night, something strange has happened. Everything outside the campgrounds has disappeared, and the world has been transformed into an endless expanse of grass. The sky is blue, but there is no sign of the sun. There are no trees, no flowers, no birds. And every radio plays nothing but the songs of 60s pop icon Peter Himmelstrand. As the holiday makers try to come to terms with this bizarre turn of events, they are forced to confront their deepest fears and hidden desires. Every member of the group has a skeleton in their closet and each secret they try to bury rises to the surface, taking on terrifying physical forms. Can any of them find a way back to reality? Like I said, the book opens up right away with just questions, 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 and mystery. And because it's it's four caravans and it's at least two people per caravan, right? And so that kind of starts with the stakes right there. Like how I'm gonna get my loved one out of this situation? How the hell am I gonna get out of this situation? And um I think I think right away it you know in the blurb it tells you like they stuck there. There's nothing around. It's just them. 
And the good thing is, if it wasn't a lot of people in this campground that are in the same situation, this would have been a more deeper, eerie, more disturbing book because it's going to be just one or two people stuck with their minds or whatnot or what they, they think and process. And so we as humans, we all have flaws, right? We all have secrets and a lot of us have deep, dark secrets and stuff like that, right? The stuff that can rise to the surface, right? Like a lot of times when I'm driving, because I have all this time to just think, right? If the radio is off, I'm not listening to no podcast or whatever the case may be, no audio book, whatever. I'm, thoughts come to my mind, which is why I'm happy I got this hobby of just starting to sing, just creating music or, or music that's already in existence, right? Because we would start to think too damn much. That's the problem, right? I remember um, watching a documentary about the people on death row or even the people who get thrown into the hole a lot of those kind of situations would would would, would spark insanity in a person because they're just stuck with their minds or whatnot this is that kind of book but it also talks about the fears and the regrets and the guilt that these people live through and how eventually in this book those fears those regrets those guilts start to turn into something physical that's creepy as hell right whatever you fear Turn that into something physical, lock your ass down in some kind of campground with no sun, no birds, no flowers, the radio playing the same situation, eerie, disturbing, creepy, right? That's this book I'm trying to tell you. Are you listening? And so the author does great creating these characters and the setting. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's not much to the setting, but the characters being in the setting brings about, you know what I mean, this sort of immersive reading experience. And again, the backstories, how they got to this situation, they feel real is what I'm trying to say. Um, he does, he's very clever. None of it feels fake, none of it feels pressure, or anything like that. And so you're gonna become connected to a lot of these characters and you're trying to figure out, okay, what the hell are they afraid of and how they gonna get out of this situation, you know? He has a very interesting and creative style of writing. It's like it's an uncanny horror in even the way that he writes the prose. It's like something isn't right here. In every sentence, it seemed like there's a there's an air of terror, like something isn't right. You know something is wrong. And then one by one, these creepy things start start to happen. You know what I mean? Between either the characters that are in the campsite or the external. Like it's it's just not them. Don't get it twisted. It's not like Castaway. You're not just there and you're just dealing with your mind. Stuff is gonna be coming. Either they creating it or it's just it's been there forever it's just so it's, it's crazy i gotta say one of my favorite parts was this flashback oh sorry about that i told you it's bright um one of my favorite um damn it i'm sorry but no man one of my favorite scenes was this flashback between one of the characters isabel and her daughter molly and it talked about a big moment of regret big moment of guilt right that isabel still holds to this day and that she hopes her daughter, who was very, very young, right, doesn't remember. And if she does remember, it's creepy, right? Uh, you know, what the child going to think. But the point is, the way that it was written, the way that you can feel the emotions in both both characters at that point, and just the eeriness behind it about what it could mean, man. It was just, it did what it was supposed to do, right? You go to Six Flags, you go to uh, 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 Kings Island or, or, or Cedar Point. You get on these thrilling rods, you may not like it when you're in the moment or when you're going up, right? But when they come down and you get off the rod, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. It was supposed to scare you and thrill you at the same time. And it did that. This book right here is going very it's going it's going it's gonna make oh I'm sorry about that. That's kinda bright, ain't it? It's gonna get you off your uh your element, it's gonna get you off your your safe zone a lot of times. It's gonna make you very, very creeped out. And there are many scenes in this book that you're going to be able to visually see because he paint them so well. He does it so well. He's an excellent, excellent prose writer. And it's a subtly deep book. Don't get it twisted. Like a lot of these characters say things that you might want to write down as quotes and things like that. Um, stuff that I'm going to mention as a takeaway to, to go on with your life with. Um, and, and books need to have that. They need to be entertaining, need to be horrifying, thrilling, whatever the, the genre is, but it also needs to tell a message. And this book achieved that no problems i think one of the main themes of this book and this is why i kind of hit it at this angle what i consider as the moral of the story is when you think of catastrophe when you can catastrophize <laughs> if you will if you do that all the time you can bring about the very thing that you're trying to avoid by
by thinking of the bad thing all the time, right? They say, oh, manifest what you want. Right? God is 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 balanced, right? Good, there's evil. It gotta be like that. There's up, there's down. It gotta be like that. So if you if you hear manifest and go speak into existence, your mind, right? Because that's what we is bred to do. We think of the positive, we try to go towards the positive, but you know damn well, right? That the negative can happen as well if you keep thinking about it, you keep thinking about it, right? And so I'm thinking because these characters was in this situation, right? And we see in their arc from the beginning, waking up, and they're like, okay, what the hell is going on? And then things start just become more and more desperate, more and more desperate. And they start seeing things that they know is their fears, and they start to remember. It just get bad. It gets more bad and more bad and more bad and more bad. And so I'm thinking that's one of the main themes in this book. And that's that's pretty much the big one that I took out of it. And you'll hear more in the takeaways. You know, it's, it's curious. It's curious to me how this kind of unrest made them think. Everything was was irrational and and without logic. You know what I mean? A lot of the times, that's how they dealt with it. It was kind of like a person that was just higher drunk all the damn time. When you in that kind of environment, right? And of course, this is a setting that is made up by this brilliant author. How will you think? how how what, what what kind of panic and desperation will take over and so it painted a very very realistic reaction to me but also while you're creeped out you know what I mean you also think like sometimes we're involved in a situation that is so horrific or we're we'll hear about another person's life that when you come out of it or when they come out of it um, you start to appreciate life a lot more I started to do that as I was coming out of this out of this book like man, they was just they was just toe up from the flow up, you know what I mean? Um, from them going from the beginning to the end of this adventure, and trying to figure out how to get out of this situation and what the hell is going on, why were they marked or whatever the case may be, you start to appreciate like I'm not in that situation. I'm not bogged down by my fears and my regrets and stuff like that right now. Let me go on and uh, uh, deal with the ones that I am feared, uh, uh, that I do fear, the stuff that I do fear, the regrets, the guilt. Do I need to call somebody? Do I need to go to a counselor or a therapist? Because I don't want to be put in a situation, right? And we can do that. I think we can do that. We can put ourselves in a campsite like this in our mind. You know, at the end of the day, this book is very, 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 very deep. Um, there, are, there are great elements of horror, horror, and surprisingly, it's intensely, it's intensely gruesome, right? The stuff that has to happen in this book. The, the backstories that are described, the stuff that will happen is very, very gruesome. Um, there are themes in here of, like I said, um, thinking of negative too much and how it can start to manifest. And also how we deal with each other in these sort of uh, um, intense and um, life or death situations. And who, who can eventually take charge and who start to play the role or what roles can, can come up and things like that. So... Um, it's a complex book. It's a complex book, and it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. I will say this kind of, to me, it, it, it mixed and matched with um, upmarket fiction, right? It wasn't just horror. It's not like Stephen King, where it's just plot heavy. And of course, he does great with characters. I'm not saying that, but it's a fun, fun read, right? This book right here wasn't so fun. Not to me. Great read great read damn read good with the story plots and stuff like that things happened but it's more so oops sorry about that more so up fiction more so contemporary and a lot of the things that they they talked about um heavy on philosophy a lot of times and and uh, worldviews and how we need to live this life so let me get let me get dig that and so now let me just go ahead jump right away into some takeaways from this book there are so many that i wrote down you understand me but I'm gonna scratch off 50% of that because ain't nobody got time for a long ass book, uh, book review you understand that man I remember one of the characters they said um a kindly word at the right time can help the world go around and um I'm not sure if I was paraphrasing on that but um, there's this um scripture in the word that kind of hints at that as well it talks about um, a soft answer right turneth away wrath how many of us have dealt with a situation like that where 
let's say you pissed. You at you at nine. You at nine. Something happens from that situation. The next person says something, and now you at ten or eleven. Whereas if they would have said something that was more so calming in nature, you would have been down to a seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, I feel like, and I think a lot of times, my youth, right, that come from tough situations, or inner cities, whatever have you, fill in the blank. A soft answer doesn't make you a, a sucker, right? A soft answer may get you to tomorrow. You know what I mean? You bump into me, I promise you. I promise you. You know what I mean? Ain't no sucker or nothing like that. But if you bump into me, my bad, big dog. My bad. Let me get out your way. I step on your shoes. Damn, my bad, bro. Let me wipe that off. Yeah, I ain't gonna see you there. My bad, big dog. Oh, no, it's all good. Boom. Soft answer. You know what I mean? I walk up the road. I see three brothers staring at me. I know the wrong, <laughs> the wrong kind of response can... Chitty chitty bang bang. But how y'all doing? Y'all all right? Everybody good? Or peace, brother. How you feel? How y'all doing? Simple. No egos in there. The point I'm trying to say is be kind. Be kindly. Because that right there, doing nice and being kind for everybody, doing for others, it's going to make the world go round. It's achieving peace. The fear of a beating is provocative. One is tempted to become what one is presumed to be. Just a little context, one of the characters saw a dog, one of the dogs, sorry about that, saw a dog and the dog looked like it feared him, right? Because of the character seeing that, he was tempted to be a dog kicker, right? And my point in this takeaway is, when the dog feared being kicked by Peter, Peter had an urge to kick the dog. Again, we got to be careful with both sides is what I'm trying to say. Be careful of what you claim that you are or what you can be. Because don't, you know, your, your, your balloon head can get, can get this big and the next thing you know, you're doing stuff that you, that's really not you. Or that is very, very extremely negative or that can get you into, to, to, into, or that can get you into some, some trouble. Boom. Balloon pop. There go your life or whatever the case may be. So be careful what you pretend to be and, and what kind of situation you put yourself into because temptation is a hell of a thing. As a general rule, she believes that people think too much and that this is at the root of much of their happiness. Do, do I need to explain this one? I don't think I do. Huh? How many of us overthink things, right? I remember back in, in middle school, a teacher told us, based on studies, usually... When something is at hand in front of you, a question, a test, a situation, right? Whatever. is usually the first response in your brain that you should go with. Why? Boom. Here comes second thought. Here comes third thought. Now you, you mix feelings and stuff like that, right? You ever hear the thought? Give yourself five seconds and then just do it. Maybe that's too damn long for some people. The point I'm trying to make is you overthink stuff, right, in your life. I'm the same damn way. I still overthink way too much. And that right there can, can create a sort of um, phase in your life where you're hard on yourself or where you, you're regretting a lot of stuff and you, you find yourself in situations from bad, bad decisions. Keep it simple, keep it plain. Quick pro, quick pro, uh, uh, quick con list or whatever in your head. Boom, keep things simple. Now the, the big stuff, of course you can go get advice or you can take your time and stuff like that but don't overthink anything you'll know you're overthinking stuff when the stress start to come in when you start to get frustrated right you start to build up the anxiety keep it simple you want to be happy keep it simple they will move quietly through the days content to be together now that life's toil and struggle all over there will always be a beautiful twilight with the sun setting the cornfields ablaze and they will take each other's hands and sigh as they share a sweet melancholy and this was a daydream that seems to sum a big part of the human experience up between two characters right they're in the middle of this situation and then they have this thought one of the characters have this thought right we all want that quarter that sort of sweet tranquility have you seen the avengers the um uh which one was it with um the big boy thanos what was his whole thing 
he wanted to go through life's toils, the life struggles, snap his fingers, and he just in the middle of the country, breathing in, getting that sweet tranquility. But of course, there's that melancholy there too, because life will be ending, or life will be at its end, or you just went through all of this sad stuff. It's crazy how that's the human experience for us. We all want that, right? We all want to go through 60 years of our life, right? Once you get to a certain age, you can retire and start to enjoy it. What the hell is that about? This human experience is crazy as hell, but we all want to get to that point when we can just simply relax and reflect. And um, yeah, I mean, it was beautiful how they painted it. So the point is, no matter how tough you are, no matter who you are, we all want to get to that point at some point in time. And there's going to be that melancholy there because we kind of going to be at the end of something. There's a strange serenity in just letting go and being free, right? Um, to just escape, right? Maybe that's how a lot of people feel with no responsibility. You know what I mean? They just let go. They be free. Let everything go. Um, in a sense, yes, that's, that's the truth. But we also must fight that when it's worth fighting for, right? When you're young, you're just tired of school, you're tired of your parents. There's a serenity and, 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 a, and a peace. Forget all that. I'm done. I'm going to live on the streets or whatever. I'm going to go run away. I'm going to be emancipated, whatever. You kind of have to fight that when something is worth it. You're tired of a certain job. You don't see no benefit. Boom. That quote is for you. There's a serenity. Escape that. Be free. But we also can't can't run away from uh, life's responsibilities and the stuff that is supposed to be how it's supposed to be and propel us forward. That's just called uh, uh, natural challenges, right? And, 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 and obstacles and stuff like that in your human experience. But we also have to know that it's a fine line between should, should act on that and not to act on that. At the end of the day, beautiful story, beautiful story. Still, still, still kind of um, vague. The ending was very vague. I kind of had to go back and, and read the beginning, uh, just the beginning uh, page. Um, the narrating was, was kind of all over the place. There was like no real POV. Um, it was omniscient at times and then it was limited. I'm not sure. Um, there was an eye randomly, you know what I mean, beginning and end. But the point is, um, it's a thoughtful book. Read it if you got the time. You understand what I'm trying to say to you? Read it if you got the time. And make time and, and, and try to understand where it's coming from. Uh, but the plot and, and the sort of genre that it's in, it fits. Um, it's, a, it's a heavy book. But at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. And so I gave this book, I'm a, it's kind of cheap. I gave this book a 3.75 out of 5. I know. Hey, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, I learned a few things from it. I think you can too. Shout out to you, Mr. John. I'm sorry about your middle name. Sorry about your last name. I just can't say them. And now, well, actually, I'm that way. And so, peace. Charleroi is out. Uh.